Now I'm going to wait for this area to dry. I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to let it sit. And as I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to start working on my branch and my snake and my hat. And then while I wait for the wash for my snake to dry, then I'll start working on the shamrocks down here. So we're literally working from top to bottom. Feel free to shoot me a message if you need any assistance. I know I just went over a lot of information. I'm literally squeezing out all the blue from this brush. This brush is like... <laughs> My water is so blue right now. I guess I could have waited until after, but... What is done is done. <laughs> I mean, what color do you want? What color do you want your um snake to be? He doesn't have to be green. I just have him or her green specifically because it's March. So you choose. But I am going to continue my pull and drag technique on my branch. Please don't be too blue. It's probably going to be too blue because I went real crazy. I'm thinning out my outline here. I don't want my outline to be super, super dark. So I'm literally thinning it out with my brush. You decide how you want your outline. It does not have to look like mine. That is okay. You don't even need an outline if you don't want one. This is just, I really want the really cute cartoony look today. So I'm really going for it. I want a yellow snake. I already have blue in my water, so it might turn out as like a lime green snake. But that's okay. Okay. And you're literally switching between the two. Yeah, this is probably going to be a lime green snake now that I'm... My snake almost looks like he, she's kind of blending into the green here, and I don't like it. There we go. All right, so this surface is mostly dry now, so I'm going to show you how to kind of create other repeat this texture with the brown using your fan brush or a toothbrush whatever you have available you clean off your fan brush get it nice and wet so you can actually see the brown in there see that and just feather that texture in I mean look at that isn't that cool? I love it.
I absolutely love it. <laughs> uh, I don't mean to go valley girl on you. I'm just super excited. I mean, look at how realistic that branch looks. It's so cool. So I'm going in at a slight curve when I'm doing this. I put a wash down and then now I'm using a dry on dry technique with heavy, heavy paint, very, very little water. And I'm literally stroking this texture of the tree bark into my branch using like slight curls. And it's, be it's beauteous. I love it. So now while that's drying, I'm going to go back to doing my snake. And once my snake's dry, you can use that dry on dry technique on top of your wash to create your patterns. So let's use a damp brush with a dot of brown to get a tan kind of color for our hat here. I really, really want kind of like a tan hat. I'm only using a dot of brown. My brush is decently damp to kind of thin out this brown color. I might even get a darker damp, a uh, darker brown for the outline, for the underside. Kind of make it pop. I'm going to wait for this area to dry before I even possibly think about messing with that band on my hat. But I am going to take this brown color that I'm using and extend it out to the underside of my snake. Now to add a design, probably just going to do spot. But to add in a design, you are going to use a mostly dry on dry brush, one that's not super wet, but you want it to be wet enough to pick up some paint. You might have to revisit this area. And you're literally adding another layer of paint on top of what you have for your snake's body. We do this while the paint is dry, specifically because if we do it while the paint is wet, we're just going to move colors around, or not even colors around, we're just going to move the paint around and there's no going to be increase in intensity or darkness. There's no distinguish between light or dark. It's literally you're moving a puddle of paint around on your paper. We don't want to do that. We want our color to speak for itself. So we're going to give it a chance to do that by giving it a dry surface to stick to. See here, I'm moving just paint around. And if you want to darken some areas, you can. I'm literally darkening parts of my spots to kind of give it kind of a painterly effect here. You don't have to if you don't want to. But when you're done, 
you should be able to add an additional layer of dark paint to your shamrock. This will give you the opportunity to distinguish texture on your shamrock. Super exciting. And same thing, you're just adding a layer of paint on top of that dry surface to get your shamrock piece. Now, I am actually going to mimic what I have up here to kind of create a fading border around my shamrock. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. It's just, I think it looks kind of cool. But I'm definitely going to have to darken up my paint on these edges here to help distinguish that this border is not part of my shamrock. It's to help my shamrock pop. So bear with me here as I put more watercolor on my brush. All right, so this area needs to dry before I even think of spatter. Let's go back and do our eyes our band, and the rest of our tail. I figured red would be appropriate. I want to, I can add some texture to my snake's body. Totally up to you. I kind of like the leopardy look. But it's not necessary, it just looks cool. And for the eyes, you want a super dry brush, but you want it just very, very small amount of wet. Small amount. In fact, I'm going to wipe off some of my extra water because I don't want my watercolor in my eyes to splooge everywhere. I'm literally going to dab this in here. If I had a smaller... Thank you for joining Carly's Colorful Corner. For more in-person and in-depth lesson plans or tutorials, tutoring experiences, please take a peek at our OutSchool platform, platform at Carly Wiersma, W-I-E-R-S-M-A. For more tips and tricks, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Carly's Colorful Corner or follow us on Facebook. Until then, I look forward to seeing you in the classroom.